Hey everyone, my name is Sandu and this is devlog number 4 for my upcoming hardcore survival horror game called Holdout. Let me ask you a question. How often did it happen to you that you were playing a serious game and you are fully engaged in the process? Let's say it was a horror game and you were expecting the scary monster to appear, but then it appears and instead of being scary, it walks like a cheated pants and you start laughing hysterically. Well, it happened more than often with me, and that's because animations are so goddamn important in creating the mood for the game. Exactly for these reasons, I decided to take my time and make them properly for my game. For that, I had to play around for hours with character and animation rigging, some basic game logic, but in the end, I think it was all worth it, so watch this video till the end and you'll definitely see why. But before we start, pause this video and subscribe to my channel, it takes you just a second to make my day. Thank you. Now, back to the video. My initial idea was to create my custom input for the game, and that would be done by creating my own set of actions and inputs. That would prove later useful, because that would allow me to assign multiple keys for the same action, so let's say for moving forward you'll have both the key W and the up arrow, and so on. If I do it simply, then it will use a lot of OR statements, which will make the code look messy. Another reason is that it would work on different platforms, such as console, PC and mobile. Also, it would allow me to create an option in the settings menu, allowing the player to set their own keys for different actions. So, I started by removing the existing actions and creating my own set of actions and the according inputs. Creating a custom input is quite a tough challenge. In order to do so, you have to name the action, set the input key, and that's it. That's really all you have to do. I have no clue what all the other parameters do, so I ain't touching that. Let's go further. Now I'm gonna do the same, but for backwards movement, horizontal movement, and let's do sprinting as well, just because why not. Oh, and here I realized that instead of positive I was assigning negative buttons. Oops. Once that was done, I jumped head front into Visual Studio to write some code. Well, it doesn't work. <laughs> there are two potential reasons for that. Either I did something wrong, or the system is broken and corrupt and it won't allow me to do whatever I want to do. Nah, at that time I was like, fuck it, so we'll assume the most probable thing, which is that the system was definitely broken. So I scrapped this idea and moved on. My second idea is not really a different idea, because it's what I planned from the very beginning before my big brain thought of the custom input. So there will be two player classes. First one is character stats, and here we'll keep different stats about the character, such as HP, power, and in this example speed. The second class is called player controller, and here we'll use the information from player stats in order to, well, control the player. All the input-based actions will be here. The reason why such a structure is better than having everything in one class is because in this way it's more organized and easy to navigate. Second of all, it will create less dependencies for the controller class because compared to the player stats it won't need to be referenced as often from other scripts. I'm sorry if this confused you, so here is an example. Imagine two friends living in the same apartment. So one is smart and hardworking while the other one is me. Now, I go to take a shower and somehow flood the whole place. So, in theory, that's my fault, so that should be my problem. But since the other guy lives with me, he has to share the same problem and he has to help me clean the room while he had nothing to do with that. But if we had to move into separate apartments, the next time I do such a dumb thing, the other guy won't have to suffer because, well, he has nothing to do with me. That's not the most accurate example, but I think it conveys the idea pretty well. As a result, the character was moving. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. And it was time for animations. Making realistic animations is very difficult and time consuming, and being the lazy ass that I am, I just decided to look for them online. <laughs> there is this awesome website called Mixamo where you can find a lot of rigged characters and animations. But oh boy, it caused me a lot of troubles. I am extremely inexperienced with animations and everything around it, so I had to improvise, adapt and overcome problems. I will just say this cursed word now, root motion. Let that sink in. I will come back to it a little bit later. 
While looking for and downloading animations, another bright idea popped into my head. What if instead of calling the animations with the player input, I would make a logic that would call the animations when they are needed? Sounds interesting, right? That in theory would allow me to... I, I don't know what it would allow me, I just wanted to do that. Okay, what you're gonna do, sue me? <laughs> So, instead of calling the moving forward animation when the moving forward button was pressed, I will call it when the character's velocity in the forward direction is more than one, and similar to all the other directions. But right off the bat a small problem arise. The velocity value was not changing, so I was moving the character by changing its rigid body's position, and because of that the velocity wasn't changing at all. I have tried many different ways of moving the player in order to make the velocity work properly, but in the end I just made my own formula to calculate the velocity, and I do that by taking the current position of the player minus the previous position. And that gives me the distance and the direction that it traveled in between the frames. And now as we can see, the animations are being called depending on the direction I am moving, but if I stop, they continue playing for a while. And that's easily fixed by removing the exit time of the whole animation. But as you might have already noticed, diagonal movement is quite problematic as well. One reason is because I don't have enough animations. I have only for forward, backward, left and right movement. I don't have any animations for top right, top left, back left and back right. And the second reason is because the actual logic for calling the animation would be difficult to implement. While squeezing my brain for an idea of how to fix it, I thought that this system might cause way more problems in the future. For example, it might play movement animation on top of some other more important animations. That's why this idea went directly to the trash bin. And so we slowly approach to the third idea. This idea is to use inverse kinematics and animation rigging to make the legs rotate in a similar fashion that the head rotates in the focus system that I showed you. Compared to my previous moment of genius, this time, it actually had some reasoning behind it. That in theory would allow me to use the same animation, let's say for forward moving, for moving in different directions, because I would just rotate the legs. And since I'm much more a programmer than an artist, that was definitely the way to go for me. But little did I know about the difficulties that's gonna be on my way. It all started with the fact that all character models from Mixamo have no hips. Well, kinda. They do have it, but it's a root bone, so that means that any transformation like moving or rotating it will result in moving the whole character, which means that I can't simply rotate the legs without rotating the body. I've spent hours trying to re-rig the character in such a way that it will have hips separate from the torso, and I failed so miserably. After hours and hours of working without any decent progress, my hollow head finally was visited by another idea. And that idea was to not rotate the hips, but rotate each leg separately. Well, of course it won't look as pretty as rotating the hips because of the distorted meshes, but the game is a top-down view, so I thought you won't see any of the distortions anyway. So I decided to try. I replaced our previous Johnny with a new Johnny. The new character looks more like a naked player, which will prove useful in future when I'm gonna make the clothing system for my game. It will be much easier to notice different armor and clothing elements on this silhouette than the previous mannequin. But that wasn't the main reason why I changed the character. The main reason was because some of the animations were looking quite weird on the previous mannequin. And after researching it on internet I found out that's because it was using a generic rig instead of humanoid rig. The new character had a humanoid rig and I imported some animations to test if everything is working. The animations were working fine, but the moment I added the moving script, nothing happened. I've spent so much time looking for different solutions to fix that problem, and you know what the reason was? Root motion. Yeah, remember I told you about it a few minutes ago? Root motion is when your characters transform such as position and rotations are controlled by the animation instead of the script. So you're not moving it from the script, it's moved by the animation itself. And all the animations from Mixamo come with root motion turned on by default. Coolest thing is that if you download independent animations, you can turn that function off on the website. But it does not work for packages. After countless hours of struggling, I finally managed to make it work. And I did so by downloading all the animations again, using Johnny 2 as a character model. Then I rigged the character and all the animations with the same character model, which I wasn't allowed to do before with the previous mannequin. 
And just like that, I was finally able to move the player around while playing the animation. Once that was working, I implemented the focus system in just two clicks. That is by the way why it takes me so much time, even for smaller systems. I want to make them easily implementable and reusable for my future projects. The head and the body were acting as expected, so it was time to start rigging the legs, making them rotate in the direction the player is moving. Initially, I used a multi-aim constraint that would make the legs rotate towards the target, kinda similar to how the head rotates in the focus system. And I did it for the both legs. Seems like it's working quite well. As we can see, the legs are moving based on the target's position. Then I tried to attach this target to a pivot that would make it rotate around the hips. But I guess it does not work if you don't have the actual object, so I removed the pivot. Everything works fine up until one moment. When I implemented moving animations, it showed its real face. Or should I say legs? Fixing it proved to be the most difficult thing of the whole process. I re-imported the character, I re-imported the animations, I used different characters, I rewrote the script. Nothing was working except one thing. I decided to change the multi-aim constraint to a multi-rotation constraint. And now, every time the target was rotating, the legs were rotating as well. And after a little bit of tweaking, I achieved the results that I was aiming for. Now, I just needed some logic for that. So I made a quick formula that allows me to calculate the angle of rotation from the velocity vector that I was talking about before. And then I used this angle to rotate the target, thus rotating the legs as well. Now, using the same animation, I have movement in five different directions instead of just one. Despite the effort and time that I spent, it was totally worth it. And I'm sure that in future, it will pay off. Even though I like the way it's shaping up, the system is still very far from being ready, and in my next video I will work on it a little more. First of all, I want to make it such that the playback speed of the animation depends on the speed of the player. Another thing is I want to make the transition between different animations a little smoother, and I'm pretty sure you can do that using blend trees, so I'll look into that more. And I just want in general to add some more animations and polish everything a little bit more. After I finish with the player controller, I might actually start already with some game logic or perhaps even enemies? Hmm? Ah, we'll see about it in the next devlog. That is it for this video. In case you have any suggestions or questions that you wanna ask, you can do that on my Discord server. I'll leave the link in the description below. You can find a lot of new friends, their memes and sneak peeks about my future project. Currently I'm thinking of hosting an art event and the winners will have their names inside the game as an NPC. So come join us to be able to participate. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!